Oh, hello! My little roaches, guess what? We're in a brand new Roach Motel, baby. That's right. The Maiden Voyage here at the Josh Potter Show in a brand new studio. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Make sure you like, subscribe, all of the things on iTunes. Make sure you uh, subscribe and hit that bell on the old YouTube as well if you're watching this whole thing. I hope you are because you get to see we're in a new spot, baby. And I'm excited to be here. I want to say thanks to Ryan Stickler for housing the Roach for the past year. We're going to get Ryan here in the new studio uh, in the next couple of weeks. We're going to coordinate that. But today, I have a very special guest uh, joining us here in the Roach Motel, my buddy. Thank you so much for coming, dude. It's Brian Simpson, everybody. <laughs> I always say that like there's going to be an applause. <laughs> right. Well, you've got a soundboard, right? Yeah, I guess I could make an applause on here. You're right. Yeah. That's a good point. I could do that. No, it's all just John Otto talking. <laughs> it's quiet. <laughs> but yeah, well, you know, we're, we're working it out here. I got... Uh, I got lots of exciting things planned for this new incarnation of the Josh Potter show. So I hope you guys stick with it and join, keep joining us. But tell us, uh, you know, where everyone where they can find you and everything like that while we get started here. Oh, yeah. You can uh, you can find me on all socials at BS Comedian. Uh, you can go to my website, BrianSimpsonComedy.com. And you can email my podcast for advice at uh, BS with Brian Simpson at gmail.com. And again, the podcast is also BS uh, with Brian Simpson. What kind of what kind of advice you be giving out? Whatever people ask for. Mm. You know, I always uh, uh, preface it by saying, you know, I'm not an expert. Right. You know, because you have to. I could have called my. I could have called it swim. You ever been on? Like you ever look for advice on the internet and there's always people put swim and mean it means someone that isn't me. So it's like I'm giving you advice, but I'm but I'm just but I have to word it in such a way. Like like if you go if you look go somewhere and look for like medical advice. Or if you go somewhere and go, hey, can I take Molly if I'm on right. Lipitor? You right? Google it, yeah. Right. It'll, it, you'll find a form. Like from the early 2000s, people used to go s- swim. Like someone that isn't me says I that it's safe to take Molly with it. You know, that's so in case you die. So you're just relaying some uh, someone else's uh, advice. Well, right. Well, you're pretending to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. but, but I don't I do not do that. I'm just saying I just make sure everybody knows like I'm not an expert. Awesome. Well, but, that's fun. But these I are the check mistakes that out. I've made. I want to let everybody know, by the way, thank you if you came to San Diego this past weekend. Unbelievable shows. Had such a great time. And uh, the new club down there, Mike Drop Comedy Club, if you are a San Diegan, make sure you support that club because Casey, my buddy, he's doing it right and uh, support live comedy out that way especially at that club. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send in all your roach reportings. You can send in music. Whatever you want to send in, that's the place to do it. I'm going to be in Chicago August 11th through 13th, and then on the 25th, I'll be in Philadelphia. So please to be buying tickets to those shows at J underscore Potter on Twitter, at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram. Wanted to let you know about those things. So thank you so much again if you came out. Uh, I have some emails here from people at Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Last week we talked about Disney movies and how they are so brutal, killing the mother. The fu- it's traumatic. Some of them. Have you noticed that? Um, the mother dies. You mean the like father Mar- like dies. Marvel? No, Disney. Like you know the old animated classics. Like Bambi. Bambi is a specific yeah. one that we did discuss. Yes. Yeah, I mean Disney was. Um, what, what the kids would say problematic yeah I guess it was a long a, time I don't know if it was problematic per se but it was definitely trauma uh, traumatic yeah well they but they would because because the the biggest criticism growing up was just that um they they never had black people unless they were animals <laughs> unless they were animals well, and then you would go like that's a black guy. yeah and you're like I be the scene <laughs> by <about> everything <laughs> right yeah that's it and it would be like it would be like a crow yeah and it would be <laughs> exactly yeah it would right. be like an animal you're like mm. oh then, yeah like a jungle book yeah like jungle book yeah the, that was yeah that was the elephant I don't think yeah King Louis I think I know we all know who and King I'm, Louis I'm was. not sure was Song of the South Disney yep. Yeah, that, that, that's what uh, the the uh, Splash Mountain is based on. And of all the wild shit that Disney has separated, like 
Of all the wild shit that they'll stand up for, Song of the South is the one thing they tried to bury. Like, you can't even get it anymore. Well, they tried to bury it, and not only that, it's the theme for Splash Mountain. And so they were like, yeah, it's Song of the... They just changed it. I don't, I don't know what they changed it to. Do you guys know? We have Princess Rob and, and the Frog. Oh, Princess and the Frog. We have, uh, by the way, for those who don't know, new addition to the show, Rob is here. Say hello. I don't, people can't see you this time, but next week we'll be able to see you. see it right here. Oh, Let's they can? Oh, look at that. All right. And Kirsten, of course, is still here. Say hello, Kirsten. And uh, yeah, so we have... We're we're just adding to the uh, another roach to the intrusion, but yeah, no. Song of the South was the theme for uh, Splash Mountain up until like two thousand and twenty. I want to <laughs> say they like used Pandemic to remodel it now. Princess and the Frog, but yeah, the, well, they didn't change it actually. They didn't change it yet. No, no, no. They they floated that idea of changing it, and then they actually didn't. And it's like Brer Rabbit and all that crap, you know. And it's basically they're singing zippity doo dah as you walk through there. Right, but I think a lot of people don't associate the two. No. But it's kind of still got those racial under. They're like trying to like, like the uh, wolves are trying to like lynch Br'er Rabbit. You know what I'm saying? Well, They've got them. Well, the thing is, if they want to separate from racism, they have to stop being called Disney, right? Because isn't that like <laughs> the founder was racist in the book? Yeah, I th- I want to say he was, and I'm trying to like talk about this on stage a little bit, but it's going nowhere. Uh, We're too invested. I think that racists. Would you agree with this? Like, they have, even if, okay, so say there's a racist guy, right? Even mm. like a QAnon racist. Take one of these guys. Okay. I think they hate Jews more than they hate blacks. And I'll tell you why. It's because I imagine they have a bit of reverence for black people in terms of, like, say they were a slave owner. Mm. They'd be like, this one's great. He plowed the field so fast. Like, I love this guy. They never have that reverence toward a Jew. Well, I think r- racists have historically always loved black people that can do win, something. Can them. win. Them. Right. Like, if you win in a championship. Yes. Because think about it. A lot of the first, a lot of the racial barriers were broken by athletes first. Right. It's like, oh, that boy can run. You right. know what I mean? But. I, I think that I, I'll, I'll say this. I think the most racist people, I think they 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 probably hate Jews more, but they fear black people more. Oh sure, because they they're not scared of the Jews because they because they, they're afraid <laughs> they're afraid that we want revenge. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Because Jews don't blame the average American white for Jewish issues plight they yeah. they come in straight at the people that's anti-semitic right but which tends to be though the oh yeah same, the yeah. same it's, person <laughs> it's all, yeah it's all real up in the, it but it's wild to me that there are people that are still aggressively racist in that way oh sure and, I, and, and i'll be honest with you it's so hard for me not to laugh at them it's very funny to me it's hilarious it's also like you were saying that uh they're they fear black people. i think they somewhat fear jews but in a macro sense in terms of like they're like they control the weather they think that they're oh, like right, right. everything they, that goes wrong is like the jews did it yeah so they they fear us for different reasons right they think jews are like wizards right and they think black people are like an army Yes, 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 right. yes. I just saw the funniest, and I'm and I feel bad that I can't give credit for it, but I forget who so I forget who made the sketch, but it was a fake like NRA commercial. Okay, and the and the guys are on there like we're the National Rifle Association, and we think you know Second Amendment, blah blah, blah and every American should have blah blah blah, and then like a Black Panther pops up and like yes, all my brothers and sisters should be armed <laughs> to the teeth. We should be walking the streets. <laughs> And the two dudes are like, uh, yeah, yeah. That's just, it's, it's, it's that weird, I don't know, man. Cause yeah, I, it's strange. Because, you know, we travel a lot. And and what a lot of people don't like to do is address the nuance in it all because they feel like it lets people off the hook. Cause, because there's levels to racist. Sure. Right? And Because there's good old-fashioned, like, you know, you know what the cosmic microwave background is? No. Man, that would have been a great analogy. Rob knows. Yeah. Uh, uh, was the uh, was the sketch that you're talking about? Was it college humor? I don't know. I think it was college humor. I but, was going to say but, Ryan but, Long. There's a there's a there's a so the cosmic microwave background is just it's radiation left over from the Big Bang that we can see in every direction. It's everywhere. It's just oh. it's very subtle. We can see it everywhere. But it's like that. That's the racism. That's it's There's a racism that's just 
it's the it's the base racism that's just everywhere that permeates through society. Sure. And some people that's that they're on that. And then there's other people that like have costumes and are in clubs and like racism is their identity. And that's a different thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we but they I think they get lumped together in, in, and if you try to go, well, actually there's different levels of then people accuse you of like taking up for them or whatever. And it's like, I no, see. but I mean, but I'm like, these people ain't the same as these people. Right, right, right. These people are just people and they're stupid and or they or they're ignorant. And these people are people that are like made a choice. Actively, yes. Yeah, and and I I see them as separate groups of people. Sure. I can I can have dinner with these people that's just ignorant. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even be in the same neighborhood with these people. Right. You know? No, that makes a lot of sense. And back, but back going back to Disney real quick. Yeah, they they used to murder a lot of parents. Disney sometimes children. Yeah, it would be like you'd watch a, every princess story was like oh, yeah. mom and dad went on a boat and died or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I got this email from Nick at Josh Potter Show at Gmail dot com. He says, uh, "What's up? Glad you're making such a fast recovery. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Loved your last show. So many things I wanted to chime in on. I remember my uncle took my sister and I to watch Bambi in theaters." Of course, after seeing Bambi's mom die, we were crying our eyes out. My uncle was so pissed about the movie that he demanded a refund and got it. Then we went for ice cream, so it was all good. But that's the thing, like, your uncle didn't know that Bambi's mom died? I mean, it's a movie from the fucking 40s. Wait a minute, he was... Wait a minute, Bambi? Yeah, Bambi. So what I saw was a remake. Well, they did... They always, like, they bring it out of the vault, or whatever, mm. you know, and they re-release it to try and get some more, you know, money in their pockets. Nah, I need they H- did that with Little Mermaid as well. They got to do high def. Yeah, now they should do live action Bambi. Oh God, nobody wants <laughs> Buck Hunter style. You know, that would be dope. They bring back some shit. They Yo- they stopped doing those live action ones though. Once Lion King came out, they were like, "All right, what are we doing, bro? Have you seen? Um, have you ever seen? Are you watching the anime? No." Bro, there's an anime. I don't even watch cartoons. There's an anime called <laughs> Bastard. Okay. Right? That um, I saw it like 20 years ago, and it was probably from 20 years before that. And it was so offensive and like crazy that I never imagined I would turn on my Netflix a couple of days ago and they remade it in 4K HDR. <laughs> and Wild. Like, and, and they actually like added stuff to the story to make it make more sense for American audiences and stuff like that. And I was like, this is crazy that this is on here. And then, and then, and here's what's wild is I think that someone talked Netflix into putting it up, but now the only way you can watch it is if you go look for it. Like it's not gonna pop up in your suggestions. Right. It doesn't pop up in my continue watching. You have to. I have to go find it. Go find it because it. yeah. it's that. Because they probably like were like, oh yeah, we'll do that, and then and then it got up and pe- people. I guarantee people wrote letters right away. They want people to not find it. Yeah, like the the, <laughs> ma- the main the main character is an evil wizard that was sealed inside the body of a boy that can only be woken up when if with a virgin kisses him, and his lover. He's been alive for four hundred years, and there's a girl that lived with him for a hundred years that he raised from a girl that's also his lover. Mm. So he's her father. Wild. Well, that brings it. I mean, and we're going to talk about a news story on. in a little bit. Have you heard about that, Ricky Martin? No. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Let's let's okay. first. Right, yeah, let's be jumping. We in have. Uh, you know, we're in a new space. We got some new digs, but we have some some old tropes to discuss. Sussel Wilson has just been all in my feed. Doc Schneider doing all kinds of shit. You know Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson, the football player. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we have, what do you think of him? We'll we'll get into it too. Beep 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 beep. beep, 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 beep time. Beep 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 beep. beep, beep. What's that? Beep beep oh. beep beep. beep, beep, beep <laughs> it's me, baby. Beep 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 beep. beep, beep, beep. Because he's talking about sports. It's the sports section, baby. And uh, Sussel Wilson, I have kind of like let Sussel him, Wilson. I've kind of let him go for a little couple months. Okay. Haven't really talked about him, but boy, oh boy, he's. So been, I know how you feel about him. He's he's just sus to me. I don't. He's like a, trying to be this guy that he's not. And I've known a lot of. I know a lot of athletes have accused him of being square. I think it's deeper and darker than that. I think he's like. A serial killer. Yes. Yeah. He's got something weird going on. Yeah, I feel I get those vibes. Exactly. You know why though? It's because we <clears throat> we inherently don't trust do gooders. He's not a do gooder. I, I, I know, I know. But we that that's what I mean. 
the the average maybe it's a, I don't know if it's an American thing because I've never lived somewhere else, but we people that follow all the rules we don't trust, mm-hmm. right? That's why that's why you know with, between John Jones and Daniel Cormier, most people pick John Jones until mm. recently because Daniel Cormier was a good guy, no no blemishes on his record, blah mm. blah blah, and John Jones was a fucking piece of shit, and people people will identify with a piece of shit before they identify with somebody that like. And then, and then when Dan, when when Cormier finally admitted to cheating with the towel, he won me over. See, I like a flawed hero as well. Yeah, we all like a flawed person. Somebody, Russell Wilson tries to pretend like you know he follows all the rules. Oh, I'm I'm with Sierra, but we wait until marriage. Right. And it's like th- that that makes people go, no, th- what? He's tweeting Bible verses. Right. He's overcompensating. Yeah, you're not real. You the, you. Because there's a there's a line you cross right where it's if I as soon as I get the feeling that there is something about you that you want me to think I'm suspicious from that point. That's forward. what he's putting out such putting on such airs, and he wants to be this like Captain America, this whole like I'm a wholesome whatever. But it's all he's not like a charismatic guy. He tries so hard to be one of these guys that goes out and he's so here's an example. Here's a video of Russell Wilson playing with his children, just like, OK, uh, you know, playing catch with your dad or whatever. This is their version of playing catch with their dad. Uh, Daddy, green dot. Get back, get back, get back, up, up, back, back, up some more, up some more, up some more, Go. Woo. good. Come on, Casey. Now your turn. This is like the the scariest game of catch I've ever seen. Eyes up, eyes up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good. You knew better. Come on. You knew better. Look at that. You knew how you knew. What you have to do? Where your eyes? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Come on. Uh, eyes, eyes, eyes. Up, back. Keep your eyes up. Keep your eyes up. Up, up, up some more. Boom. Open. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Imagine you're a, cu- a kid. You go, hey, Dad, can we go in the yard and play catch? And he's like, not just like a regular dad where he's like, let me show you how to throw a spiral, son. You know, this guy's like, eyes up, back, forward, back. You're like, I just wanted to throw the, the ball around, Dad. <laughs> you know? It's fucked up. He's like a fucking back, front, go, back. What I want to know is uh, which one of those kids is Future's kid? <laughs> because... I think those ones are both his. Oh, really? Because it's like, yeah, because I'm like, I don't think Future That's will be so happy funny. about the way you're playing catch with this child. And you want to know also a thing about Sussel is that he was scared of Future. They were at, um, the Super Bowl was here, obviously, in L.A. And there was a party, and Future showed up to it, and Russell Wilson and Sierra bailed because they because Future was there. Well, I don't know if that means he was scared of Future. I don't know. I He's think a he was... world-class athlete. Future is not an athlete. I know, but I that's a, even more of a reason why I go like, what? Why are you? You know, I would walk up to Future and be like, "What's up, dude? You, you know, this is the the father of one of his stepchildren, right? I mean, he probably not there at the drop offs either. You know what I'm saying? Sure, I would, I would imagine not. Now, you were in the uh, armed forces. Imagine if Russell Wilson came to speak to you when you were like deployed. I wouldn't be there. I never went to see anybody. Would you like be hyped up if he? Look, nope. I want you to hear him talk to the troops. This is the most uncomfortable. Thank you. It just. By the way, this this video is long. It goes on for way too. It's like just say thank you and shake their hands, Russell. Let's hear him stumble. Uh, let through. me guess. Let me guess. Is he going to tell a story about someone in his family being in the military? No, he's going to tell a story about how he's like. I how? just. He goes. I face adversity every day on the football field. You know what I'm saying? Like, watch. He like almost compares his life to theirs. He's like, I get to wake up every day to play football and all this shit. Like, it's not forever. And you guys are able to protect us daily, uh, men and women. And just, it's, it's a blessing. I got three kids at home, and uh, I know that um, I can I can count on I can count that they're gonna wake up every day. Hopefully, uh, because of you all, and uh, it just it makes a difference. I know a lot of times we we get to play for you. I know a lot of. Guys, we have people that have played in the, uh, lived in the military, you know, worked for the military and all that. Um, people that we've known, um, people that we've lost, or whatever it may be. But just, we just want to say thank you, guys, just for allowing us to play the game that we love. Um, we get to 
I get to throw the ball to Tim Patrick and make, <laughs> make touchdown catches every day yeah. because because of you all. <laughs> but, I, but, yeah. but I think more importantly, you guys protect our freedom. You allow you allow us to to do. Uh, to do what we all love, whether we're playing sports or whatever we get to do in life. And, I love um, getting an abortion. And, and definitely, uh, you know, we can never say thank you enough. So I just want to say thank you guys uh, from all of Broncos team, locker room, and everybody in there. I know we don't get to spend enough time with you guys. We wish we could hang out more, but just want to say thank you guys. How many well, times? I mean, he just stumbled Russell, through there. If, just, you, if you really love the troops, you would have brought Sierra. <laughs> exactly, dude. Tease. And it's just like, uh, I just, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, he's, he's not a guy that, He's not this guy. You no, know what I mean? No. Because here's the thing, too, about this is those men have heard speeches, have heard way better speeches from way better men than Russell Wilson. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, cool. I get to like risk my life so you get to throw a ball to yeah. Tim Patrick. Or somebody show up and be like, you guys are America's offensive line. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like how he said, too, he said something very cryptic in there. He was like, uh, my my three kids, uh, they they get to wake up every day. Hopefully, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. right? Like what? <laughs> You're like, what are you gonna do to him, dude? But again, again, he's taking ownership over Future's kid. You gotta you, you gotta be you, you tread lightly. Can we get a goog on that and see how many kids does Russell Wilson have with Sierra versus Future? Well, I'm sure if he if he's saying it's three kids, I'm sure two of them are his because only one of them is Future. Yeah, he only played catch with two of them. So I think two of them might be his, and one is Future's kid. Yeah. Was she with anyone else other than Future? I thought she was with another rap person. Um, I don't know, man. But I feel like, um, I feel like being re- being with Future is a red flag. You wouldn't? Would you? That's like a body you wouldn't abide by. No, no. You would be like, you've been with Future. No, because uh, if, if, if Future got rid of her, she's on the streets. <laughs> What's he, what did he do? <laughs> if he get, if Future gets rid of her, she's for the streets. She's for the streets. She's for the streets. So Future, you hold in a high regard. So if he was no, I just it's just he 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 is quick to be like she's for the streets. I'm done. So if he's done with her, she ain't. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. No, I hear that. And, and now it's it's fucked up because Russell Wilson is is now through. I won't say through no fault of his own, but he's held up as like this polar opposite of future. So now, like when you hear people, women discuss relationships online and stuff, it's like they go, do you want to wrestle Wilson or future? Right. You know what I mean? Do you want a square simp or do you want a streets player? Well, that's what makes me wonder, too, about Russell Wilson. Is he such a square simp or do when the doors close, is he like, does something happened dude he's got a darkness in him that's though. what i'm saying yeah. and is that what sierra's like Ooh, dad you know what i mean like yeah, who knows man does that come out i wonder yeah definitely definitely but he, he definitely chokes chokes rabbits or something yeah there's something that like he goes inside he he lets loose in a way that we'll never know about yeah like mr he, unlimited like, I, bet you, <laughs> I bet you he can't come unless he suffocates like a small animal and he has these pictures every now and then where he's trying to like smile and you're like, that's a smile of a person who is like Googled how to smile. Do you know what I mean? Like he doesn't have the ability to naturally smile. Oh, that's the truth. It's the one. same so one, but uh, he has uh, two kids with Ciara and uh, she has one kid. from. I could Future's. tell. I saw him playing in the yard. I didn't see Future's kid in there. That's no. what I'm saying. They were all. No. His and that kid's kid. probably going to be the better quarterback. So, <laughs> yeah, right. The futures, futures kid, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah futures kid. Yeah. I don't know much about futures. He a big guy. He's a tall guy. All right, maybe he'll, maybe that'll be interesting. What if Russell Wilson has to like go? Ah, oh, well, that's not mine. But he's a pro football player. That would really put his yeah. brain in a. He's a tall guy. He single handedly invented mumble rap by accident. Interesting. I don't know anything about future. I should know more. Today's Josh Potter Show is brought to us by BetterHelp. You know, life is full of twists and turns and stresses and changes. And sometimes these things, at least in my experience, they can cripple you in terms of your mental health. And it always uh, helps when you have someone, an outlet, to discuss these things and talk about them and, and find a way to push through and find a way to 
uh, sort of relieve that fist around your brain. That's what I find with therapy, and BetterHelp makes therapy even easier uh, than it ever was before. BetterHelp Online Therapy is here to help with all those twists and turns. They assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. It's crazy. And we can, by the way, if you don't vibe with your therapist, it's free and easy to change therapists in their uh, network as well. And they have so many working for them, you're going to find one that matches your needs and you vibe with. You can schedule weekly video online sessions or phone sessions. Uh, no uncomfortable waiting rooms. You're not in there worried like, oh, am I going to run into the, my dentist here or something like that? If you're worried about that kind of thing. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. Uh, it's more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is available. So BetterHelp, uh, a great way to show up for yourself. That's really the message here. You got to help yourself. You got to invest in your well-being you deserve inner peace visit betterhelp.com slash josh potter that's better com slash josh potter and you can join over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced professional and the special offer to all my little roaches out there right now you get 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash josh potter again 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Josh Potter. I wanted to bring up this story, though. Let's go to the news because uh, this is breaking. <laughs> Ricky Martin, are you familiar with the musician? Uh, living La Vida Loca. Living La Vida Loca. That's well, all I know about him. Is he's it? living La Vida incest at the moment. What? He uh, was just arrested for having sex, I guess a long relationship, with his 21-year-old nephew. His tw- it's legal age, but it's his nephew. So that so that makes it against the law? Well, in Puerto Rico, you can be uh, charged with uh, 50 years, or you could be sentenced to 50 years in prison for incest. Oh, Wow. And uh, I got to so I posted about this on my Instagram and I got a DM. I wish I could give credit where credit is. How you fuck your nephew, though. Right. So at any age. Yeah. So like uh, this DM, though, from this person who lives in Puerto Rico said that the nephew is infamous in Puerto Rico as a person who is like a clout chaser. So they think that they're manufacturing these charges of domestic abuse, which but that's not the issue. We don't. We're not wondering if Ricky Martin beat up this twenty-one-year-old nephew he had a sexual relationship with. We're still hung up on the fact that, that the fact that they were fucking. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know what okay, I'm saying? So, so let me let me make sure I got this correct. Yeah. You're saying that Ricky Ricky Martin's nephew is a known clout chaser. That's what this person accused. Him. So, and he he publicly accused Ricky Martin of uh, of domestic abuse. Yes. And that made it come out that they were in a relationship. Yes. And and. And Ricky Martin got arrested for that. Yes. Wow. And now they could also throw in the incest charges. Well, let's hear about, let's get into some of the details here for a second. Ricky Martin's lawyer is speaking out after domestic violence allegations against the singer. In early July, the AP reported that uh, a restraining order had been filed against Martin. At the time, the com- uh, the complainant's identity was protected under the Domestic Abuse Prevention and Intervention Act. Uh, the documents stated that uh, the petitioner... Feared for his safety. Martin denied those claims. The former Menudo star put out on social media statement, the protection order entered against me is based on completely false allegations, so I will respond through the judicial process with facts and the dignity that characterize me. Because it's an ongoing legal matter, I cannot make detailed statements on this. Uh, I am grateful for the countless messages of solidarity, and I receive them with all of my heart. On July 13th, a Spanish news site... Marca reported that Martin's nephew, Dennis Yadiel Sanchez, was the one who filed the complaints against his uncle. Sanchez claimed his uncle had been physically and psychologically abusive during a seventh month or a seven month long romantic relationship. Now, the attorney for Martin is speaking out. Unfortunately, the person who made the claim is struggling with deep mental health issues. Ricky Martin has, of course, never been and would never be involved in any kind of sexual or romantic relationship with his nephew. The idea is not only untrue, it is disgusting. That's what the lawyer stated. 
We all hope that this man gets the help that he urgently needs, but most of all, we look forward to how this awful case being will be dismissed as soon as the judge gets a look at the facts. Marka claims that the American crime story star could face up to 50 years in prison if he's convicted. Martin is also currently being sued by his former manager, uh, claims that live in La Vida Loca. Oh, no, this person, he just owes this person $3 million of unpaid commissions, evidently. So he's being sued for that. Uh, but this is a potential career ender, they're saying, for Ricky Martin. So this person very well, I'm, and I again, I got a DM about it from someone who yeah. lives in Puerto Rico. I and live in La Vida Loca was the career ender. I mean, it was the career starter, I guess. <laughs> oh, right. Although he was in Menudo, which I never really I don't know got. What that is. It's like Ricky. Remember in the '90s when Ricky Martin came out and Living La Vida Loca came out, and every girl was like, "Oh my god, so hot." I was like, I was on team Enrique Iglesias, big M- time. Oh, Menudo was a boy band. Menudo was a boy band, and then he became like the Nick Carter or like the Justin Timberlake of Menudo, where he had like a solo career. Right. right. During that entire like Latin wave of the late '90s. Right. Remember when all that was going on? It was like Ricky Martin, Mark Anthony, Enrique Iglesias. It was a huge thing. Selena. Selena was earlier, but yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, and I don't. I mean, Bitty Bitty Bump Bump or whatever was like a big hit, but I don't know that she ever kind of like caught on with white people right. the way that those guys did. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you see Live in La Vida Loca, you're like, oh, Ricky Martin's gay. And then it, it was always like, no. And then it came, he came out of the closet. Oh, okay. Like very much later, and I thought that was trying to get back into the like, hey, I'm gay by the way, so can I can I come back into like the, the limelight again? You know, did it work? Not really. I mean, now we see that's the thing about this where you go like Ricky Martin's gay, so like this isn't completely like if he was a straight guy and his nephew was like, yeah, he's been fucking me for seven months, you would be like, well, Ricky Martin's not gay, and that's crazy. To <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, the thing is, I feel like I feel like at least one person in every boy band is gay. Yeah. That's just, it, it ends up hap- being true. The math is pretty there, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's no Backstreet Boys that are gay, right? Wait a minute, who are they? The Backstreet Boys. I well, mixed them up with NSYNC. NSYNC had Lance Bass. He's gay. Okay. Uh, Menudo has Ricky Martin. Um, 98 Degrees only had three of them, and two of them were brothers, and, right. and Nick the- Lachey was fucking Jessica Simpson, and- that would turn anyone straight if they were gay. You know what I mean? That fire. <laughs> the, the legend of her pussy is like. Those boots are made for walking. Yeah. And then, so yeah, there's no, I don't think there's a gay Backstreet Boy, but I'll tell you what, Brian. Not yet. Brian of the Backstreet Boys is QAnon. Oh, I thought you were going to say he tried to molest you. No, no, no. Brian of the Backstreet Boys is QAnon, and then him and uh, Kevin, who's his cousin, used to just fight on Twitter constantly about politics. So it broke them up, and then the lesser Backstreet Boys joined the lesser NSYNC members for like a super group tour. Damn! Imagine fighting on Twitter. I don't fight on Twitter. I don't either. I try yeah. not to. I, you know, my mental state is low if I'm fighting on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put like, it that way. Like when somebody says something uh, that I find objectionable on Twitter, I I have the argument in my head, and then I move on. What'd you pull up there, Rob? What's that say? Oh, that, that's just that's the next story. But apparently, uh, oh, my bad. Apparently, none of the Backstreet Boys are gay. Although AJ McLean is bi. McLean, 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 yeah, yeah, he's 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 bi, and he is a self-described fag hag, according to. What's Wait, that mean? Hold on, hold on. He, what star is he? AJ McLean is the uh, guy that looked like if you were to look at the lineup of Backstreet Boys, you'd go, if I were to to pick a gay one out of there, I'd say it would be AJ, right? He's got all he the- He looks like a piercings. close-up magician. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's got wow. like a David Blaine. The Call is an epic so song, he's, he's though, he's bisexual. What's, a, what's that hag thing mean? Does that mean he like- It means he likes he likes being friends with gay, with gay men. Oh. Isn't that what girls call themselves sometimes? Yeah. And so they just have like a flock of gay men around them. So he has that. That's, yeah, there he is. The call was a banger, though. Good for you, uh, AJ. Well, yeah, Ricky Martin, we'll see. I don't know. I When I read the story, I wasn't necessarily shocked by it. I'm like, you know, I don't know, the Latin culture. I don't know. It could be fucking his he, nephew. He live in La Vida Loca. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, what, he's, Doesn't that mean I'm living a crazy life? Yeah. He's living La Vida fucking... Which is, which is why, because this is the only... <laughs> it's wild that that's his, his, his number one hit. But this is the craziest thing I've ever... This is the only crazy thing I've ever heard about him. Really? Yeah, I've never heard him doing nothing else crazy. He doesn't really do... Yeah, he's been out of the spotlight for forever. 
I don't even know. Does he have? Can you look up his like discography and tell me like when's the last time he put any music out? Because I think he's just living La Vida Loca was such a huge hit I that I think he could just take his money and run. You know, he's like, and I always admire a star for doing that. He's you know, like living in Puerto Rico probably costs nothing, and he's like, you know, living off the hog and and he just disappeared. Meanwhile, you know, you got fucking Mark Anthony who's. You're like, that guy has like 17 records in the last six months. What is he? What's going on? Ricky Martin's got a few hits, but uh, there's, I mean, there's several in here that I recognize, but I think they're all from a while ago. Right. He hasn't put out anything recent. recently at all. Well, I want to let you know, sir, you're in the Roach Motel. What do you think about roaches as a species? I hate them. I just found out recently that I am allergic to them. What does that mean? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I grew up with roaches. Like when I was young, I grew up with roaches and I fucking, I hate them. I hate <laughs> them. I, the only animal I hate more than roaches are flies. Okay. But I don't think roaches serve any purpose whatsoever. I hate the motherfuckers. And, and I, um, I just recently, I went to the, I had my nose checked out of the doctor and like it was swollen on the inside. Okay. And she thought it was an allergic reaction. So they tested me for it all these allergies and she was like you're not allergic to anything except roaches slightly wild and what if they bite you or if they're just on you or i don't know but i but i and i but i but i, I looked it up and i learned that the the more you're exposed to them the more allergic you get well i think this might have something to do with that because i got this uh sent to me at josh potter show at gmail.com roaches are currently evolving and it's not good for humans and this roach right here is evolving, as you can see, with new space and everything Fuck. like that. So get ready, folks. Apparently, humans aren't the only animals going keto. The German cockroach, one of the most common pests in the world, is evolving to have a glucose-free diet. Unlike many humans, it's not because they're suddenly watching their figure. Rather, German cockroaches have inadvertently outwitted human pest control tactics by evolving to dislike sugar, specifically glucose. That could have huge implications for the population of cockroaches worldwide, which is a particular concern given their uh, propensity to spread bacteria and disease. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll switch to salt traps and raise their blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's make them all diabetic. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> They're all getting fat and shit. I, oh, my God. I don't even like seeing... If I find a roach... I, I always collect it and I take it outside because I don't want its guts on my ground or on the wall. What? Do you know what I'm saying? No, Josh, that's ridiculous. I don't like <laughs> I don't like smushing bugs. Their organs and shit are on your wall. Well, no, then? Nobody likes smushing bugs, but I also don't like them in my house. I Man. know, but I capture them and then I th take them outside. Yeah, but that's where they came from. They got in from outside. They already know how to get in. Damn. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, I murder every bug. Every bug that's in my in my domicile is getting murdered. How far do you think you got to take it away before it doesn't know where to get back? I don't like know, a block? Man. I don't know, man, because I I don't know if anyone's done an in depth study on their their homing their pack. ability to figure it out. Yeah, because I feel like I don't know, man. I'm I I kill them all, and you know what? If you don't like squishing them, you could always burn them. Well, you know what I try to do is uh, if I'm not gonna like catch and release i try to euthanize them with chemicals you know i'll spray them with chemicals and then i uh, hope they just kind of like die and then i can take their corpse and put it outside but that's just going to attract other roaches too i don't want their i don't want their guts i don't it gets so grossed out at the idea of their blood and shit on my wall it's like a crime scene all of it's, a sudden it's more of pus than blood even still yeah Oh, God. And then I remember uh, back when we were building up uh, the, the Your Mom's House studio when it was in L.A., I remember there was a huge roach in the studio, and Nadav stepped on it, and it made a sound that made me, like, <laughs> wince. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, it almost made me puke instantly. Right on, Nadav. It was so alarming how big it was of a noise, of a pop. But uh, wrote, continuing on the topic of roaches, get this. The Oregon race for governor was in the spotlight of the New York Times Tuesday as the paper's morning newsletter focused on the unique race between three powerhouse women, former Oregon House Speaker Tina Kotick and former state representative Christine Drazen and former Senator Betsy Johnson. So they're just doing a primary or whatever. Mm -hmm. In her interview with the Times, Johnson is using the nickname City of Roaches to reference Portland. Is this my city? I did sell. Isn't, a, isn't a, it the city of roses? I sold great tickets in, in 
Portland, so maybe I'm. No, maybe Port- it Portland's is. a city of roses. Well, she said roaches. Evidently, that's something she told uh, KATU during its political show, Your Voice, Your Vote. We've turned into, we've, well, here, look at you, you're right. We've turned the city of roses into the city of roaches. And we've got to get the garbage off our sidewalks and then begin to deal with the underlying problems, she told KATU's Steve Dunn during the interview. According to uh, analysts from The New York Times, Johnson, who is running as an unaffiliated candidate, is appealing to voters who may otherwise vote Republican. No shit. Is that an is that a is that like a like a like coded racism? Right. Because I lived in Portland for a couple of years. No shit. Yeah, and well, I lived in Hillsboro, but I went I went to the city quite a bit. It's not that far, and Portland was, in my memory, the cleanest city that I've that I've been to. Really, the sidewalks were immaculate. So, and I, you know, so I feel like her saying it's the city of roses is now the city of roaches, because Portland also has like a serious like racist past. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you step, if you go just you know, a mile outside the city, like you gonna meet, you gonna be like, what the, where the fuck am I, right? So, for that sounds like coded, yeah, language. We gotta get to these me. roaches off the streets. Yeah, because Portland isn't known for just for you just seeing roaches every motherfucking way. Well, maybe because it was so clean that even the slightest bit of garbage has these conservative people up in arms. Well, back then it's because they used to put the prisoners to work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that everywhere. I mean, I always thought that was kind of like. Uh, interesting that we could take prisoners and be like go clean the highway we're gonna let you outside of the walls to pick up <laughs> trash you know what's weird though i was uh, i took mushrooms and i went to the san diego zoo and i saw a man walking around and he had this little instrument and he was scraping gum up off the off the road mm. and i go how much does that pay you think you know how much do you think that guy's making probably 20 bucks an hour or something see that sounds good yeah. Like I had for a moment I go what if I just like said fuck everything and I just was a guy who goes you're walking around the zoo, you know, you're just it's beautiful outside. What if I just scrape gum off the ground for the rest of my life? I'll take it. I don't, I mean it doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> because because, because I, I'm I'm realizing now all that really matters to me is that I feel I feel as though I have a purpose. Right. And that I'm super comfortable when I'm at home. Right. And I can come every now and then. Yup. I don't it. know that the guy who's scraping gum off the zoo is uh, getting laid all the time. But, He's uh, fucking, dude. You think so? He's fucking. Oh, if I got free zoo passes, that is a way to start fucking, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hook hook your boy up with some free zoo passes. Let's get some ladies I mean, that way. If he's making 20 bucks an hour. We got to find, I don't think that, I think that's a alarming amount of money to be making for that. Oh, he, and he's definitely, he, and, and you know, every now and then. <laughs> They're in a union. <laughs> every, every now and then he, he catches, he catches a woman throwing gum on the sidewalk. Oh, I do. There's so many chicks walking around that zoo. I'd use it all the time. I'd be like, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah. you got some gum? Why don't you spit it out on the ground and I'll scrape it up. What, bro? They're they're hiring right now. Uh, eighteen to twenty. It's this one is sixteen to eighteen, and the other one is eighteen to twenty two dollars to be a janitor at the zoo. I said that I go. I'd love to just have a job at the zoo, even if I was a janitor. You just walk around. You get you get to see all the animals. It's a beautiful day. God, it's nice. To, it's kind of there's something yeah. comforting in the idea to go. I could always just be a janitor at the zoo. You're like, and some women are impressed by that. Girl, I keep the city clean, baby. You know what I'm saying. I would hope so. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine having swag being a janitor at the zoo. No. But I could definitely imagine retiring. Well, first of all, you wouldn't call yourself a janitor. You would call yourself a custodial engineer. Ooh. I was trying to think of a of a way to like yeah. church it up. Or you call yourself a, a you know, a, a a a facilities resource manager. What do you think, Carson? Would you if a guy started spitting game to you and was like Yo, baby, I'm a janitor at the zoo, or whatever you said, co- custodial engineer. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'd definitely ask if you can get me into the zoo. You've been uh, to the San Diego Zoo, yeah? I haven't, actually. And you used to uh, live there. I know, I haven't, though. Wow. Oh, I thought you I thought you would know more than the rest of us how impressive it is, so you'd be like, oh, that. well, if, it's better than being a janitor at, like, McDonald's or whatever, you know? But hey. See, when, when it comes to shit like the zoo and the museum, I gotta go by myself. I went with uh, a couple of friends, and it was like z- I we took mushrooms, so I was kind of like just floating around, enjoying. It. You know what the problem is with the zoo for me, 
And I do this often with a lot of stuff, actually. You know, people will be like, oh, did you see that? And I go, yep. I didn't see it. No. Nope. Because I'm, tr- I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to blow, I'm trying to blow through. I'm only stopping at the shit I think is cool. Yeah, I mean, like they're like, oh, there's the baby, such and such, and I'm like, yep, that's look at that. Right, where the sharks at? Have where no the gorillas idea. at? And I'm out. I don't see shit. Yeah, fuck I was the, like Jurassic Park. I was like, are we gonna see a fucking animal at some yeah, point here? Fuck the flamingos. That's the thing about the San Diego Zoo too. It's so big, and the habitats are are like expansive, so they they aren't confining to the animals. But you don't see any of them. They need to confine, put, put that tiger in a fucking cage so I can at least look at it for Christ's right. sake, you know? But, but I feel like I wish, I want a zoo that's just dangerous animals. I don't need, like, cute animals, I can watch them on TV. I got a nice TV, I can see them in HD, and I can uh, I can absorb the cuteness. But a dangerous animal, you gotta feel that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta be near a gorilla, a bear, a, a tiger, to feel that the epicness of it. And that's all I want. I'm Isn't trying to it, see the epic animal. I'll say this, though. I was like uh, about from where you are to me, and there was glass, obviously, in the way, okay. to an alligator. And I was like, I felt fine. But I kept thinking in my head, I'm like, if this glass was in here, I'd be shitting my pants right now. Yeah. And like the alligator's looking at me. Does he know the glass is there? Has he tried, like, you know, yes. his first couple of days in the zoo, he was like a oh, fucking human and tried to eat it and then run into the glass. And now he's just like, oh, yeah, there's yeah, glass sure. there. He's tried. They all try. They all try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, I had one moment where I was on mushrooms there and I saw the flamingos and I spent quite a bit of time at the flamingo exhibit for whatever reason because they were probably the most active and there was the most of them. And all I could think about is how I go, I could fuck up a flamingo. Yeah, I beat the shit out of a flamingo. I could fuck <laughs> up. Like, I just, its legs are so skinny. I could just be like, you know what I'm saying? Not even Are you try. sure, though? Oh, dude, look at a flamingo's, like, neck and shit, too. It's like, it's, it's I could a, tie that shit in a knot and fucking. It's been a while since I've been near one. Because I, I used to feel the same way about an ostrich till I, I've seen an ostrich more recently than I've seen a flamingo up close. Their necks are a little more, even though they're long and skinny, they're a little more sturdy. A flamingo's legs are fucking like sticks i was like imagine they must have a like if a a breeze blows and like a you know a leaf hits them it must be like ah like how do they not like snap those fucking legs all the time can you look up if if you can if 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 a human can beat up a flamingo is there yeah is there a video of a human fighting because i I know i know an ostrich gonna give you gonna give you the business oh sure those things they have beaks they'll peck you these things they might give you a little fight but if you just kick out its couple of legs i mean those legs are so goddamn skinny that i feel like they're not doing shit like i feel like most animals like you know like you like you think you could take down a llama what's that man fatally beat flamingo at bush gardens oh well that's him fucking okay look at yeah. this fucking guy <laughs> he's beating up a flamingo at bush gardens i wonder what it what did can you read the this uh, story a man on vacation with his family at a Florida amusement park beat up a beloved dancing flamingo, which had to be euthanized because of its injuries, authorities said. Joseph Anthony Correo Corral, a 45-year-old Orlando resident. Well, there's your problem right there. He's from Orlando. Oh, sure. Uh, was at Bush Gardens in Tampa when he reached into the Jambo Junction Animal Viewing Area, picked up Pinky, a 15-year-old Chilean flamingo, and violently threw her to the ground, officials said. <laughs> That's funny. Was, was he, he on, was he on the ground? Why did he, he do it? Yeah. Does it have a motive? Uh, did it, it snip in an at account its kid? that appears to have been deleted? Correo said he and his two sons had box seats for a game that was quote all you can drink and eat free. I will be tipsy tonight. Oh, he got wasted. He, he got wasted. He was going to go to a Tampa Rays game, and it says he intended to get hammered. Well, you got her to go to a Tampa Rays game in that terrible stadium, but uh, that's just funny. He's just so drunk that he's like, Let, watch me fuck up this flamingo. That's kind of what I was like on wow. shrooms. I was like, I think I could fuck one of them up. Do you know what I mean? I would I've never, never do it. I've never been on any drug that made me... Violent. Or just made me do anything that... Anything crazy. The only thing that I can imagine would make me crazy out of the experience that I've had is my uh is drinking like if i got blackout drunk but i don't i for sh- i don't foresee myself ever getting to the point where i'm like pulling i'm like hey watch this and i pull a flamingo out of its fucking habitat but and e- kill e- it even when i'm when i'm drunk I, it it's just harder for me to do what i want like right. it's harder for me to walk or drive but it's but it's 
it, it, it makes me want to do something I never wanted to do. Look at that little neck. I'm telling you, I could tie that shit in a knot. Okay, well, let me ask you this. How many flamingos... How many fl- flamingos could beat me? Yeah, how many flamingos do you think it would take before you would be like, I'm overmatched? I really feel like their legs are their weakness, and you just kick out their legs and they're fucked, and then they can't move and they're in pain. You so, know what I so mean? So you'd have to be exhausted for a group of flamingos to fuck you up. Yeah, I'd have to be like, uh, like paralyzed. So it comes down to your cardio. Sure, or it's just like, say I'm like one of these guys that's like got the straw and shit, and I'm in there, I'm like, you know, and I'm moving around that way. That's the only way a flamingo, I think, could beat me up. And if I think were, even if, then I could run them over with my If you were chair. paralyzed. Right. Yeah, but okay, so what I'm saying, so how many flamingos are you going to fuck up before you run out of steam? I'd say 50. So, so okay, so at the, so you, so it would take a herd. Is a herd what you call a group of flamingos? A flock. Is it a flock? No, they oh, have, yeah, they're they birds. Have a, they have some stupid name for a murder of flamingos like a crows it's like an exoticism of flamingos or something yeah flamboyance a flamboyance well see that i could fuck up a whole i could fuck up a whole whole flamboyance flamboyance. (laughs) give me five flamboyances i'll fuck them up i mean if they're gonna call it a flamboyance i'm not frightened of it right you know you just have to go out there and go hey (laughs) yeah yeah Boom. No, thank you. But sli- are, you can see that neck right there, right? I mean, that alone. And then they can contort it in ways where they're doing like corkscrews and shit. I'm like, you could tie that shit in a knot. So what do like, they ah. eat? Are they are they are they uh what you call them? Are they uh carnivores? I believe they eat shrimp. I oh, oh my okay, hold on. Before you tell me, I overheard a middle-aged woman tell another woman completely sincerely, "Oh, the one that's got the white feathers hasn't been eating enough shrimp." The shrimp makes them pink. And I go, there's no fucking way that's true. But can we see? Maybe I'm wrong. I, this, I, I, just, I heard this woman earnestly say it. What's that? I believe it's the algae that turns them pink. They do eat shrimp, but I believe, they it's, do. The, I believe it's the algae that turns them pink. Because I, I was wrong. like, there's no shrimp in this oh, yeah. fucking get, get, zoo get, right get now. Get used to this, dude. Rob is smarter than all of us. <laughs> and no shit. since he's going to be here in New because he produces my podcast. Yeah. And he, every once in a while, he's going to say some shit that make you remember that you don't have a degree or whatever. You right. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, I should have probably, you know, took a class. No, yeah. I mean, I am so far removed from uh, formal education that I'm happy that we have Rob on the team now. And, uh, and Kirsten's usually there to correct me on something as well. <laughs> so yeah. that's nope. I, I, the more the merrier because I fucking need it. Let's but just put actually, it that way. I'm going to push back on this here. Okay. I think it's something else from the shrimp that makes them pink. You're saying you, wait a minute, you're saying you think it's the algae from the shrimp? No, I think that, uh, I think that their diet is a bunch of different things. Like the shrimp, when we're talking about shrimp, they're like these like tiny, tiny little shrimps that they okay. eat, like different types of crustaceans that they eat. But there's also an algae and I think it's the algae, but it could be both. Hmm. Mm. And so the white one wasn't eating enough anything? I, yeah, I do know for a fact that it's their coloration. They're naturally white except for the the diet that they have. Oh. There's something in their diet that gives them different colors. So that's why there's different like different types of flamingos. Some of them are orange, some of them are pink, some of them are red. And so do the do the females, do they fuck the pinkest ones? Yeah, it's the pink Probably. ones, like uh, the hot ones. I Either way, I will murk an entire flamboyance and not even, like, sweat, I feel like. You know what? Every time I see a flamingo, the Three's Company theme song pops into my head. Come and knock on our door. it was the first thing that, w- it was like the first frame of the show, of the intro. I don't remember. I know the whole theme song. We've been waiting for, for you. you. And a thing and a thing. Hers and his and his. Three is company, company two. two. And then they had a flamingo, like a lawn. Why did that become a lawn ornament, by the way? We're like, oh, we got the flamingos on the lawn. Dude, because people in the 70s was corny as shit. It really is something. And when I saw the flamingos in the exhibit, I go, it was corny as shit. Yeah, I did, they were I did all about that. like fur. Fur couches and fur rugs and like shag. Uh, my friend who I was with, Andrea, she was telling me she knows a lot about koalas, and we went and saw the koalas, and they didn't even move or anything. And she said that they're the dumbest animals in the world. Koalas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 uh, their brains are smooth. Yeah, they're they they somehow figured out because because they they eat because uh, they're actually carnivores. Okay. Or herb or whatever. What do you call people that can eat herbivores? Both? No, no, omnivores. no. Omnivores. They're omnivores. Oh, okay. But they 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 evolved to eat meat. 
Mm. But they, one of their ancestors just figured out that they could eat eucalyptus. But it, it's so lacking in nutrition that they, they basically have to eat it all day long. So that's so all they do is eat because they don't have the fucking balls to kill something. But and they, if you take their like, eucalyptus, if you like, just put the eucalyptus in front of them, they don't, they don't. They has to be like on the tree. Yeah, they're so dumb. Yeah, they're really stupid, and I thought that was interesting. I think I could fuck up a couple of them, even though they're. What, once again, once again, Brian was one hundred percent correct. Ooh. The uh, color in flamingos comes from carotenoids, which are related to beta carotene, which is what gives like uh, tomatoes and carrots their color, that orange red color. Mm. And um, there are carotenoids in both the microscopic algae that the flamingos eat, but also the brine shrimp that they eat also eat that algae. So uh. they do get the color from the shrimp because the brine shrimp are like sea monkeys, right? They're Some like gay guy tiny. out there is going to hear this and go, I'm going to start turning myself pink. <laughs> right now. I'm going to get a be a, brine shrimp. make my own ass flamboyance. That's wild. Did your friend happen to know why koalas like have chlamydia so bad? Um, I had heard that story a couple of times. They didn't know that, but it's like it's a, it's a different kind of chlamydia. Wait a minute, I, may, I think all the stuff I just said wasn't correct about koalas. Probably not. I think, it's, I think that's pandas. We're not here. We're not a fact check. You know what I mean? We're who, not like a science bamboo? podcast. Bamboo Pandas is the panda. Bamboo. No, but okay. they do about that. They do the eucalyptus though. The, the um, but I don't think that they are meat eaters in any capacity. No pandas. I think pandas. Pandas evolved to eat meat. They can digest. And meat. by the way, a little scam for the San Diego Zoo doesn't have any pandas. That's like what they advertise. They have like a whole panda section. They go, they're not here. I don't know if it's like a conspiracy or something. No, they even have other. They have the red pandas no, though. Because pandas won't fuck. Well, I I found this out though too. China owns all the pandas. Oh, so I didn't know if they did they repo the pandas from the San Diego Zoo. I think so. We went around. And we're like, where are the pandas? They're like, they're not here no. anymore. But everything, there's all these signage. They have like the panda cafe, the blah blah blah, and it's like a big. It was supposedly a big draw to the San Diego Zoo yeah. that they, they have pandas. Pan, pandas won't fuck. They're going. Ex they're the. Uh, remember Jim Jim Jeffries has a famous bit about it. Mm. Pandas are the only they're the only animal that's going extinct that doesn't that's not being doesn't have a predator. They're like by choice. They're like yeah, we they just, just are they, done. They won't fuck each other. They have to eat so much that they just all day they want to eat bamboo. Wild. And they just are like we're too yeah. lazy to fuck. They put them they put a male and a female in a cage together, they won't fuck. We just got to let them go, folks. Yeah. I think we're running out of yeah. And plus I mean, they're the most useless animal. Why are we trying to save them? They don't want to be saved. Are, are they ferocious in the wild? They for the streets. No. No, okay. In fact, I don't think any more of them exist in the wild. Well, they don't exist at the San Diego Zoo, that's for sure. And they even have, they go, we have uh, red pandas, though. And I go, that's not a fucking panda. It doesn't even look like a panda. It even says on the sign, the other panda. Like, they don't even have, like, a full-on uh, name at first. And then they go, oh, it's, it's also known as red pandas. What's that say? This is uh, about a study from 2015 where they tried to figure out why panda, why the panda's ancestors ditched meat for bamboo. Oh, uh, it happened. It seems to have happened about 2.4 million years ago. I would want to know more so what the fuck happened to the pandas at the zoo? Where did they go? No one would tell us. It was like a big secret. Like they were trying to cover something up. I which, think it which has, zoo was this? Uh, the San Diego Zoo. Where did they go? They used to have pandas. It's there. It's on all the maps. It's on the brochure. There even says panda exhibit. And they're like, no, they don't have them anymore. And you're like, why? Did, Ch did China come in and repo the pandas from yes, America? Yes, they did. They took them back. The pandas were on loan for a uh, panda con giant panda conservation program, which came to an end in 2019. Oh, my Lord. So China's coming in for our fucking pandas now? These fucking yeah, motherfuckers. They're the worst. God, I hate China. It's, I'm not, you know, I, shouldn't, I, should, I should retract that, you know? LeBron, I don't want LeBron's eye. <laughs> I don't want Marvel to be mad at me, you know? What was the saying, Kirsten? I don't remember how to say it, but I learned how to say in Mandarin, like, I love you, China. Because I figure they're going to just, we're going to end up having to learn Mandarin at some point, huh? Yeah, I mean, if you want your podcast to be worldwide. I think that's when I started taking hits is when I had, you know, started shitting on China. But, you know, nevertheless, let's shift gears to wrap up the show, though. I wanted to hear, because this is interesting, somebody sent me this in uh it's a story that in it, the headline it says oral sodomy have you ever heard it referred to as oral sodomy before oral sodomy is that eating ass exactly 
Oh. <laughs> Never heard it in my life referred to as oral sodomy. I yeah, think that's, it's, that's a why I go, whoa. That's a weird way of putting it. Yeah, it's just eating ass. And this, uh, this is the way it came up Oral here. anal. <laughs> yeah. Oral <laughs> anal. Oral so- but they make it sound so evil by being like oral yeah, sodomy. Yeah, oral sodomy. A correctional officer in Georgia has been charged for having a sexual relationship with an inmate. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office said that Leanne Lewis, 31, arrested Wednesday and charged with sexual assault by a correctional facility employee uh, in violation of oath of a public officer. The Sheriff's Office said that authorities received a letter from an inmate at the Douglas County Jail alleging that Lewis was sexually involved with another inmate. Hey, if you're in jail and someone's getting some ass from a fucking corrector's officer, shut up, dork. Right. What? A Why are you fuck? narking on him? It, are they labeled a snitch? Are they, oh, do yeah. They get the, do they get the snitch treatment? I would hope so. You need to. I would hope so. Or the, or the inmate should at least get something knocked off their sentence. Because, right? I mean, if we going by the whole Me Too, the power dynamic and all that, a correctional officer fucking you is... A you power know, dynamic, yeah. Right, yeah. it's like you being under the care of somebody that is, you know what I'm saying? You should get something knocked off your sentence. Uh, investigators were able to corroborate the inmate's allegations, and Lewis admitted that she had kissed and performed oral sodomy on the inmate in custody, officials wow. said. Wow. So I wonder, I, I would hope it's in that order. How lonely you gotta be to, how long you gotta be to blow an inmate? This is, she didn't even blow him. She kissed him and ate his ass. I, I hope she kissed oh. him first. Uh, and oh, that oh, second, just, just oral sodomy. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that, well, that's even worse. How do you? How lonely do you got to be to eat an eat an inmate's ass? Yeah, and out of all the asses you're eating, talk about you're don't eating know an where inmate's ass. Don't know where it's been. Actually, I guess you know exactly where it's been. Yeah. Well, that would make it even worse. You're like, <laughs> you've seen the toilets. They're, they're making wine and that shit. I guess, but Jesus Lord, and all the other who knows what else has gone in that inmate's ass. Not only the corrections officer's tongue but you know the guy in the cell maybe that's the guy who ratted it out they're like your ass feels different <laughs> what no, you have been going on in that no, ass your ass tastes different yeah exactly yeah, yeah. what's this what's this is this peach lip gloss <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also where do you find the moment where do you find the time because think about oh they got a lot of time in there I, well, the, the inmates do. Yeah, but but <laughs> yeah. the guard. The only way, the only time you're around is on your like you're not coming in on your day off to eat ass. It, it's it's also like, how does it get to that level? The inmates just sitting there, and you're like, oh, I can I can see like I I mean it's a tale as old as time having like a corrections officer and an inmate having a relationship, but to jump from we kissed and it was wrong and blah 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 to just being like we kissed and then I started orally sodomizing him yeah like like right like and that somebody's asshole is the that's the last place that your mouth should go because that's not that's not even third base that's that's back in the dugout yes that's like you've 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 scored and now that's extra innings yeah you are yeah you not only did you hit a home run but you brought in like four runs <laughs> yeah, right yeah. right you don't you don't go from you don't go from first base to asshole i mean leanne lewis could just be the coolest chick ever maybe yeah <laughs> she sounds like she just might be just like walking because eating ass is like the rage it's obviously a, it's right. an acquired taste because there's chicks out here that don't like to admit that like they love it they love to eat ass yeah and it's becoming a, more prevalent is what i mean but when do you think the tides turned, or do you think that they were always doing it? Like in the twenties, it was like, bah, 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 yeah. I think, I, ass, I think know? it's just becoming more acceptable to talk about it, like eating pussy. Okay, so it was like it was happening yeah, back in the it day. Was, yeah, it was definitely happening. Yeah, but you had to like find a real special lady. Oh, is that her? Mm-hmm. That is her. Yeah. Well, I was hoping she. No, she's uh, she's fine. I mean, she looks like a girl that goes like, I'm just gonna go straight to eat. I mean, but, well, I mean, but look, this ain't her best. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, that's a mug shot. Yeah, that, that's not her you, tender pick. You see a mug, well, some of these mug shots you see, you go, look at that lady. Good God. Yeah, but yeah. Right. She, but she does look. She has just like I eat ass face. Right. She definitely has like I fuck a I fuck an inmate face. A hundred percent. Interesting. She her face and, and y'all can't see it at home. Her her face looks like well, like she just got finished going well. She's just fucking. She's wiping the. Wiping her mouth. 
Yeah, yeah. She got, well, I'm going to use oral sodomy for the rest of my life, by the way. She's got tiny lips. Is it so, so, sodomy is anything but the butthole? Yeah, it's, uh, I think so, yeah. It's, does, I, does, what does it mean exactly? To sodomize. It's to be technically non-procreative sex. Is oh. Sodomy is any sex that's not going to create? Yeah, non-procreative sex. So mouth sex is sodomy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Although there are there are conflicting definitions of it. I always even, thought it was because even because even the even the origin of it because it comes from Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. That's a. Yeah. Oh, so I'm look. So I just looked it up. It says <clears throat> the crime of oral or anal sexual contact or penetration between persons or of sexual intercourse between a person and an animal. So oral sodomy is redundant, is what you're right. saying. Right. Oral or anal sexual contact is sodomy or penetration between persons. Or wait a minute. Oh, so okay. So oral or anal contact or penetration between persons, or fucking an animal. I like how they have to throw that in there too. They're like, or it's you know, if you're they're all sodomy. So I guess he's right. It's like it's like any sex that's not intended to to that to can't lead to procreation. And that's why it's a sin, folks. Right. All right. <laughs> that's why they call gays sodomites. Yes. Right. And that's just a person who lived in Saddam or whatever. Right. Sodom. Sodom. My bad. But, Imagine you live in there. That sounds like a hell of a. Place but that's crazy. How come Gomorrah didn't get a name? Because they weren't fucking in the ass. They were. Well, Gomorrah uh, was where the lesbians. They were lived. all doing vagina stuff. <laughs> yeah, Gomorrah was. Gomorrah was for pussy eaters. Yeah, they were all doing shit the regular way with the peen in the yeah, vagina. Yeah, you flap finders. But I'm gonna start using that. I'm gonna go, hey, lady. You know, why don't we get to some oral sodomy later? What do you say? <laughs> Look, good old fashioned sodomy, baby. But Brian, I appreciate you coming in here for the debut, the maiden voyage in the brand new spot. I love you. You're the man. Tell everyone where they that can find you. Right. Oop, I hit the wrong one. That's what that'll happen, Rob. I'll hit the wrong one from time to time. Here we go. Tell everyone where they can see you in the next couple. Is of your weeks. prescription the same at the bottom of your glasses? Oh yeah, oh. it shouldn't be. I'm. By the way. Daddy's going to need a new prescription soon. <laughs> Things right. are getting blurry, folks. <laughs> uh, you can find me at BS Comedian on all social medias. BS with Brian Simpson uh, is the podcast. BS with Brian Simpson at gmail.com is the email for the podcast. And Brian Simpson Comedy.com is my website for my tour dates. And uh, of course, you can follow along at J underscore Potter on Twitter, at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram. We're streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore underscore potter and we've got gigs coming up in august quite a few the big ones being uh zany's chicago august 11th through 13th philadelphia helium august 25th and uh i've got some others that we're going to announce for september very soon so keep your eyes and ears peeled to all the places thank you so much for liking and subscribing on itunes and pleased to be continuing to do that on the old YouTube as well, friends. And we will see you next Tuesday right here in the old Roach Motel on the Josh Potter Show. Who's making these beats for you? We got all this one right here <clears throat> was made by a gentleman named Griff Parker. But we have everybody sending in uh, beats and uh, a bunch of people. Very talented group out there. So continue to do those. And you can send them, by the way, to Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Send me beats, bitch. Send me beats. <laughs> All right. We'll play beats. Hell yeah. I like a good beat. I'll do a little dance to it. <laughs> Shoulders only. Thanks again, dude. I love you. Love you too, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>